Hi, this is William, and today we're going to talk about microdata guidelines and how Google and other search engines attempt to present those. The article describes the basic microdata guidelines that Google and other search engines look for on your website. So what is microdata? Microdata is a wet WGHTML spec used to nest semantics within an existing content on web pages. Search engines, web crawlers, and browsers can extract and process microdata from a web page and use it to provide a richer browsing experience for users. Microdata helps technologies such as search engines and web crawlers better understand what information is contained in a web page, providing better search results. Microdata is an attempt to provide a simpler way of annotating HTML elements with machine-readable tags that with similar approaches of using RDFA in microformats. So the HTML microdata spec is a way to label content to describe a specific type of information, for example, reviews, personal information, or events. Each information type describes a specific type of item, such as a person, an event, or a review. For example, an event has a properties venue, starting time, name, and category. Microdata uses central attributes in HTML tags, often span or div, to assign brief and descriptive names to items and properties. Here's an example of a short HTML block showing basic contact information for Bob Smith. In this example, you have start with a div, and then my name is Bob Smith, and people call me Smitty. Here is my home page. Then you have a reference to, to his page. And then I live in Orlando, Florida, and work as an engineer at ABCD Corp. And then you end with the uh, forward slash div. But here is the same HTML marked up with microdata. So you have the div item scope item type, and that references the data vocabulary.org in person attribute. Then my name is span item prop and the name attribute Bob Smith in spam. But people call me span item prop equals nickname Smitty in spam. And here is my home page, and he references the example.com. And then he uses item prop is equal to URL and gives the example.com. And I live in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and work as a span item prop title engineer. Uh, in spam and at spam item prop affiliation and ink list Acme Corporation and in spam and then in div. And here's how this works. In the first line, item scope indicates that the content is a div as an item. The item type is the data vocabulary.org person in the case of the item as a person. And then each property of the person item is identified with the item prop attribute. For example, item prop equals name describes a person's name. Nested entities. The example above shows contact information about Bob Smith, but it doesn't include his address. The example below shows the same HTML, but in this case it includes the address property. So you see everything, and then when you get to the middle, you'll see that item prop equals address, and then the item type is data vocabulary or, or address, and then item prop locality, Albuquerque, in span, again span item prop region, New Mexico, and in span, and in span again, and then work as a, as a span. The address properties itself an item containing its own set of properties. This is located by putting the item scope attribute on the item that declares the address property and using the item type attribute to specify the type of item being described like this. The item prop equals address item scope item type is in the data vocabulary.org address. Date and time information. The specified dates and times unambiguously uses the time element with the date line attribute. Here the start date property includes the start date of an event. The value in the date time attribute is specified using the ISO date format. Using this format lets you provide search engine with detailed data, date, time, and, and optionally time zone in ISO format. So for example, the 
2009-10-15 T1900-0800 GMT while still play, displaying the date on the page in a user friendly way, the 15th of October 2009 and 7 p.m. And here again, use the time, item, prop, start date, date line, and then the ISO format, and then that points to the 15th of October 2009, 7 p.m. and end time. Non-visible content. In general, Google won't display content that is not visible to the user. In other words, don't show content to users in one way and use hidden text to mark up information separately for search engines and web applications. You should mark up the text that actually appears to your users when they visit your web pages. There are a few exceptions to this guideline. In some situations, it can be valuable to provide search engines with more detailed information, even if you don't want that information to be seen by visitors to your page. For example, if a restaurant has a rating of 8.5 users but not search engines, will assume that that rating is based on a scale of 1 through 10. In this case, you can indicate this using the meta element like this. So you have the div item prop rating, item scope, item type, the data vocabulary.org rating, and then the rating span item prop equals value uh, greater than 8.5 and less than n span, and the meta item prop best content equals 10 which clearly shows that it's an 8.5 out of 10. Here's how this works. A meta tag is used to specify additional information that is not visible on the page. In this case, the fact that the best possible rating is 10. The value of the property is specified using the content attribute. Similarly, providing the duration of event in ISO duration format can help ensure that it appears correctly in search results like this. You've got the duration and begin span one hour 30 minutes, the meta item prop equals duration, the content PT1H30M in span. Use the meta tag to specify the value of the property, in this case, the duration. This allows you to use the value of the content attribute PT1H30M to specify the duration ISO 8601 duration format while still displaying the duration in user friendly text, one hour 30 minutes on the page itself. Google looks at the parent element and the meta element to identify what information that is being represented in an alternate way inside the meta tag. So in this case, it's important to make sure that the immediate parent node of the meta tag wraps around the text for an hour and 30 minutes. And this concludes the presentation on microdata guidelines. This is William, and I look forward to seeing you the next time.